Okay, we'll be looking at the straight line method of depreciation. Uh, depreciation is where the value of something like a car or an electronic appliance or something might decrease over time. Okay, it's not worth as much as when it was brand new. Straight line depreciation is when the value follows a straight line going down, like you see in the graph there. Okay, now in real life, cars don't actually depreciate like this, uh, but occasionally for smaller items and stuff, it might be a quick and easy way to think about it. So here are some uh, questions we might ask, again, to do with initial value, the flat rate of depreciation as a percentage, the actual annual amount of depreciation, then the value after some number of years. Uh, I hope you can see the uh, similarities. It's pretty much exactly the same as simple interest. It's just that the amount of money is decreasing instead of increasing. Like for simple interest, it'd be going up, now it's going down. Uh, in fact, a lot of the stuff we do here will be very much the same as a previous video on the simple interest graphs. So we will assume uh, that you're familiar with that already. Uh, do go back on that if you need to. So once again, before we answer the questions, uh, we'll think through the story first. The main idea for this type of depreciation um, called straight line depreciation, is that you're losing the same flat amount of value every year. So again, just like simple interest, only you're losing value, not gaining value. And so again, like for simple interest, on the graph, this amount you lose every year has to correspond to a gradient. Okay, why? Because each time you go across by one, which means a year passes, the gradient would be a negative number for a line like this because it would be telling you how much money you've lost. Okay, it's going down, so it's negative. Okay, all right, so let's have a look at the questions. So first, the initial value is how much it's worth right at the beginning, which would once again be the y-intercept, so this $12,000 here. And now for the flat rate of depreciation, I think the easiest way to uh, think about this uh, with this kind of given information is to notice that in four years, the value drops all the way to zero, which means we've lost 100% of our value. We've lost the whole thing, right? So for a percentage rate, we need to think about what's happening for just the one year. So we'd need to chop that whole 100% decrease into four parts. So we divide the 100% by four to give an annual flat rate of 25% depreciation. If we wanna know the exact amount, that's pretty much trying to work out the gradient of our yellow line there. So rather than see the drop as a percentage drop of 100%, yeah, we lost the whole thing, uh, but we wanna see this as a raw money decrease of $12,000, okay? The amount it's dropped. Then we'd be dividing that guy by four, giving $3,000 of annual depreciation. So finally, when we want the value of the car after two and a half years, uh, sometimes you can just read this off the graph, but in this case, it's not clear what exactly that number would be. Seems to be a bit over 4,000, but we're not sure how much. So when that happens, we'd just run the numbers instead. Uh, the value of the car starts at 12,000, then it's continuously losing value for two and a half years, so we're subtracting value, and each of those years is worth $3,000, so we multiply that. That gives you a final answer of $4,500, so as we thought, just a touch above 4000 Okay, one more example here, again with a bit of backwards uh, working. So uh, first part asks for the annual depreciation amount. In general, if you know this number, you can pretty much work out anything and everything. Like it's, it's the gradient, okay? And surely you remember from straight lines how I never shut up about the gradient. It, same deal here. So you want to think the initial value was 5,000. Then over three years, the value dropped. It depreciated. Okay, it tells us it went down to 3,635 in those three years. So to see how much it depreciated, we just have to get the difference between them, which is $1,365. What that means is in a single year, 
we'd have to divide that total drop of $1,365 by 3. That would tell us how much it had to drop by each year for three years to arrive at that 3635 Okay, and we get $455. So that's part A. Uh, for part B, we want the value to drop below 2200 and we want to know how long it took to get there. Okay, so in a similar way, we need to drop by the difference between 5000 and 2200 That works out to be $2,800 to decrease. So how many years did that take? Well, each year it drops by $455, okay, and we want to drop by 2,800 in total, so we need to divide to see how many 455s make up 2,800 in total. And we get 6.15 something something, okay, and, and we're asked to uh, get this to the nearest whole number of years, and it might be tempting to say 6 because it's closest to 6, but in this case, for this story, that wouldn't actually be correct because we need the value to drop below 2,200. So if we look back at the sort of number line, uh, what we can see is that six drops gets us kind of close. We're only $70 away, but sometimes close just isn't good enough, unfortunately. We're forced to let it drop one more year, which means this is a story where you're forced to strictly round up. Okay, and so we get seven uh, years. So be careful with that sort of rounding. Make sure your rounding respects the story. Okay, so that's straight line depreciation. Thanks for watching. See you around.